Good morning and welcome back YouTube. This your boy SOG. If you're new to the channel, please do me a favor and subscribe. Hit that like button. And if you've already subscribed, you know I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for tuning back in and showing me support. I want to talk about something very important. If you've decided to be a new gun owner, I want to teach you guys about the five rules of gun safety. Rule number one for the five basic rules of firearm safety is treat every gun as if it were loaded. Because honestly, if you follow this one rule, uh, this will prevent a lot, a lot of mistakes and uh, accidental discharges, which could result in harming someone, harming yourself, uh, getting in trouble with law enforcement and so on and so forth. So the first rule is treat every gun as if it were loaded. Don't do anything goofy, silly, stupid. Firearms are intended to use against threats and uh, for self-defense uh, protection issues and scenarios. So this is not a toy. This is not, you know, you're gonna buy a gun and think you're cool with it and go out and show it off and, uh, you know, just fling it around and point at different things and here and there. Um, so treat it as if it were always loaded because whether you know it's unloaded or whether you think it's loaded, you will always get out of the habit of, hmm, what can I do? What can I not do with this? Because I don't want to accidentally have it go off here and there. Just always treat it as if it were loaded. And this applies not just to new gun owners, but also to gun, to gun owners who have multiple guns who you know collect guns or whatever or like modifying their guns and i've caught myself doing this i've been guilty of this so showing some vulnerability here but you know when you're proud of a build or something like for example when i installed this uh this red dot or green dot on here uh every now and then i'll just kind of grab it and just kind of aim you know dry firing around the house obviously you know not aiming at anyone but um just kind of uh, you know just grabbing it and kind of just really practicing with it dry firing uh things like that but even then i mean you want to make sure that you treat this as if it were loaded because even if I know in my mind there's no rounds in here, it's not even, it, you know, it's not even a uh, um, racked and nothing's in the chamber, nothing like that. I'm still not going to treat it as if it were unloaded. So that's rule number one that will help you prevent a lot of uh, accidents. Rule number two, always point your gun in a safe direction. Never aim at a person. Never play around and act like you're shooting somebody or something. Uh, aim it in a safe direction. For example, if you're out and you're looking at a gun that you want to purchase, don't grab it and aim at the, the person who's helping you. Don't grab it and aim at other customers in the store. Grab it, aim at the ground, and um, that, again, will help you avoid just silly mistakes and accidents, um, again, from hurting yourself or hurting other people always point it in a safe direction uh this if you avoid or if you forget rule one which was treat every gun as if it were loaded let's say for example you have a gun you you don't you you just kind of overlook rule one and you have a loaded gun but you forgot it's loaded because you thought it was unloaded and you're sitting here aiming around playing around and it accidentally goes off bang and you're you, you you didn't have intent to shoot anything or anyone, but just you playing around um, and not pointing in a safe direction when the gun is in your hands could cause harm. You could accidentally shoot yourself. You could accidentally shoot somebody else. Um, but, and this is kind of a, a, a step past rule one, because if you treat every gun as if it were loaded, you would automatically point your gun in a safe direction. Because if it were if it were loaded, you wouldn't point it at anybody. You know what I'm saying? So this kind of covers your butt. If you skip over, if you skip over the fact that it's loaded, if you point it in a safe direction and you do have an accidental discharge or the gun goes off because you were uh, irresponsible, at the very least, if you follow rule two, which is pointed in a safe direction, you're shooting at something uh, safe or something that, you know, where you're not going to cause harm to yourself or anyone else. Rule number three, never point your gun at anything you don't intend to shoot. This is also very important. And again, it goes back to rule one and rule two. So a lot of these may seem repeated, but man, as often as we repeat these rules and as much as we try to cover our butts as gun owners and, um, and 2A advocates, I mean, it's just, 
we just got people who are careless, irresponsible with guns, who treat them like toys, who treat them like, like man, I'm cool because I got a firearm. No, man, that, that's not that's not what this is. But if if you never point your gun at anything you don't intend to shoot, again, that's going to help you with rule two, which is pointed in a safe direction. Now, the the thing with this one though is you don't want to. The thing that comes to my mind is you don't want to just point your gun at somebody just to uh, make them feel threatened or, or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure that's a crime for one. And for two, you, you just you just don't do it if you're not intending to shoot. This should never leave your holster uh, unless it's going to be used. And that's that's the way that I look at it. You know, sure, there's rare instances where if you want to, you know, hold a criminal uh, at gunpoint, you know, while you're waiting on cops you know, or law enforcement or whatever to get there. There are rare scenarios where someone will do that and it's justified, but just avoid, avoid things like that. Avoid, uh, pointing your gun at things that you do not intend to shoot. Don't sit here and practice your aim, um, or your dry fires on, you know, pets at home. If you got a cat, if you got a puppy, things like that, don't practice your aim on things like that. Uh, if you don't intend to shoot anything, uh, not saying that you would ever intend to shoot a, a pet, right? But I'm just saying like people just do dumb things. And this is, these rules are just intended to help people avoid doing dumb things. Rule number four, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And man, this again ties in with the rest of them. And it is so important. This is just, oh my God. I, I, uh, sometimes I just wish this was a little bit higher up on the list. Not saying it's a, it's less important, but this is, I mean, if you just, if you treat every gun as if it were loaded, don't point it at anything that you don't intend to shoot and keep your finger off the trigger. I mean, honestly, get in the habit of when you grab your gun to have it, have your index finger. And I'm not saying here by the trigger guard, I'm saying up here, you know, top of the slide, or I'm sorry, bottom of the slide, or very, very top of the frame, but just avoid it from here because this could always creep into the trigger. So always keep it up here um, until you are ready to shoot. Even when you're at the range, when you pick up your gun and you present it to shoot, uh, I don't, I always practice, even at the range, always practice this here until I'm ready to shoot. And then you can have your finger come down into the trigger when you're ready to shoot. Why? Because so many people, when they grab a gun, the first thing they want to do is wrap their finger around that trigger. And you have no idea, especially if you're newer to guns, how little it takes to pull that trigger back and have that gun go off. Especially if you, if you, uh, if you did not listen to rule one, two, or three, and you just grab a gun and you just just start pulling that trigger. You you don't know what could happen. Uh, I, actually, yes, you do know what's going to happen. But no one thinks that it can happen to them until it happens to them. So keep your finger trigger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And rule number five, rule five is very important. It's often overlooked. But be sure of your target and what's beyond it. If you're in the instance where you do have to use your firearm to protect yourself or protect a loved one and you take a shot, you're responsible where that shot goes and where it stops. If you shoot at someone and you miss and you hit someone else, you're responsible for that bullet and that hit. If you shoot and it hits your target, but it goes through them and hits someone else, you're responsible until that bullet stops. So that is a, a big point there that when you look at firearms to purchase, and you're trying to conceal carry or you got one for home defense, that is something you gotta take into consideration. A lot of people laugh at people who carry a 22 or a 380, but in my opinion, I mean, hey, a, a gun is a gun and nobody wants holes in them. Nobody likes to, to get holes put through them, right? And they will stop at some point. Now, a lot of people say, man, I, man, that's why I carry the 45, the 10 mil, whatever. Whatever you carry, that's your decision, right? But you got to think about scenarios in the case where what if you miss a shot? What if your bullet penetrates through that person and goes through somebody, goes through an innocent bystander behind them or whatever the case is? So think about the type of ammo you use, aka hollows versus FMJs, 
Think about the type of ammo you use. Think about the caliber you're using to protect yourself and your loved ones. And think about where you are, where you're going to be to help you determine what type of gun you want to carry to that location, what type of caliber you want to carry to that location. And, um, you know, and, and, and just make sure you're aware of your surroundings before you start just letting the gun go off. Um, and and it, it's hard. I get it because when you're in a situation where you got to defend yourself, the last thing you're going to think about is, huh, what's behind this person who's trying to hurt me? I get it. But we got to remember that there's laws and you will be held accountable if something goes wrong. We know that, you know, the government and uh, law enforcement, they're somewhat against us protecting ourselves when it comes to firearms. So they will try to do almost just about anything to make to make it that you are the guilty one that even though you protected yourself or a loved one um, that you protected yourself and you succeeded, somehow they'll flip the script and make it that you're the criminal, that you're the one that did something wrong and you will have you will get jail time. So, again, just cover your grounds. Make sure you guys follow these five basic rules of firearm safety. Avoid yourself a lawsuit. Avoid yourself a bad day. Avoid yourself um, a loss and bodily harm to you or anyone else. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Thank you. And I'll see you guys on the next video.